There is a massive problem and trend on YouTube right now. And this trend is simply put, steal someone else's video, re-upload it. When you get a DMCA strike, say it was copyright abuse. You're not doing anything. All you're doing is running your mouth over somebody else's work. Commentary alone does not remove the aspect of you stealing someone else's work. Don't sit here and act like I'm not gonna strike you down when you're re-uploading 100% of the original video and pop up on YouTube's copyright ID tool. That's called entitlement. And guess what you get when you are an entitled piece of You get taught a consequence. You get the real world slapped in your face. Hello everyone, and today we are talking about Quantum TV, once again, the number one brand in dishonesty. If you've been on my channel for a while, you know I've done two previous videos on this guy. And I'm hoping today will be the last one. Today is the day where I give a no BS, brutally honest Quantum TV review. But like I've stated in a previous video before, I believe that you should be able to criticize someone or critique somebody's work without it turning into a hate campaign. First off, I'll be recapping who Quantum is, which he is a TV reviewer, hence the name, but he also reviews video games and movies and other YouTubers in the AV community, audiovisual. But Quantum TV is more well known for his shortcomings, such as his deleted Twitter post, or his hacked Twitter post, whichever side you decide to be on on that, and then the screenshots of the videos, which are homophobic in nature. And trigger warning, the hacker, or Quantum himself, said something really, really, really terrible. They mentioned the Pulse nightclub shooting, which was a terrible mass hate crime on the LGBTQ community. Now, Rich isn't going after Quantum's past because of cancel culture, right? This is to further establish the legitimacy of your previous channel's ban, Quantum, and therefore justify a ban for your current one. In a response to a picture of two people kissing in a church, he wrote, Too bad you weren't a Pulse victim. In reference to the Pulse nightclub shooting, the potential ban evasion, which he's not currently ban evading, but he has previously ban evaded. And that's one of those things about Quantum that makes him the number one brand in dishonesty that he can't even be honest about something we have hard evidence of. He was banned at one point. He just completely flat out denies he was ever banned for any reason. Not even like, oops, it was an accident. Nothing. Just straight up lies. And there's something that you need to understand. The Wayback Machine can be used in litigation. So it is viable as evidence in a case. And I'm only saying this to really make the point that the Wayback Machine is reliable. But it seems he must have appealed his ban sometime this year in May. So he was reinstated in June of this year. And we also have the West Side Tech video where he's celebrating that Quantum got banned during that time. Plenty of evidence saying, yes, he was banned for a time. Just own up to it. It's not that big of a deal. If you were at least honest in that situation, I may have been able to give you more of a benefit of the doubt in this next situation where he actually calls another YouTuber's mom with veiled threats of litigation when he could have talked to the act man in Discord. There is Discord messages of them going back and forth. I don't understand why he didn't proceed on Discord. There isn't really an excuse for that in my opinion, but it is what it is. And now, number one brand in honesty, let's go over your review, specifically the review you did on Legends Arceus. Let's go over why I think that's an awful review. So I'm sitting here trying to understand why everybody says that this Pokemon game right here is like the greatest thing since a sliced piece of bread. trash. It's literally trash. There's no music. Like, we're right here in the game, and there's there's literally no music. Listen to this. You can hear the cues, the audio cues, right? Let's get closer so you can maybe hear it. No music. First of all, have you heard of ambiance? The sound of wind and trees and water flowing. They give ambiance. Maybe with the music, it would have overshadowed the ambience they were trying to give. Not a crazy thought. Hey. 
And that sound is one of my favorite sounds in Pokemon. One of my other theories as to why there's no music is because of that little sound for shiny hunters. And if you're unaware, they're Pokemon of a different color and they sparkle when you find them. The breeze of a wind. He strikes a dramatic pose like something happened. Usually there's a sound cue or music in a normal Pokemon game. But in this crap, silence. And this, this has been like the whole first half of the game. It's trash. Like what, who plays this? I can't, I can't. This is so miserable. For one, literal children play this. For two, this is an action-packed RPG. It's a very calm game. What were you expecting? Oh wait, I know what you were expecting. To ride on a dragon and fly into battle. It's trash because it doesn't really introduce like mind-blowing mechanics that you've never seen before. Like, are you are you swooping down on bosses after flying in from a dragon? No. Are you flame-throwing bosses with a dragon as a part of gameplay? No. Oh, lucky me, I get a flute. Oh, I get another one. Oh, <laughs> where did their budget go? It wasn't in the graphics. Like, f*** <laughs> me, dude. This is so terrible. And nobody, and, and everywhere you look, everybody's saying how great this game is. Nobody's going to tell you how <laughs> this is. Well, you know what? I'll be the only one doing it. This game is trash. It's just miserable. And I think, maybe skip this trash, because holy <laughs> You are not the only one to give a more negative review of Legends Arceus. It has its problems, I'll give you that. There are some glitches. They don't have necessarily the greatest in the world graphics, but it is a cute little game. And the whole open world aspect is something a lot of gamers, including myself, has wanted for many years. So of course, like a lot of people, they look at the good parts of the game instead of only the bad, which is why they have good reviews. It's fun. That's what matters. Oh, that's the only music cue we get, and it's just telling us we got a celestial flute. Oh, lucky me. Back to wind breezes. Tumbleweed. The driest Pokemon game experience ever. Oh my god, with the flute. You, you get where this is going. Real banger of that track right there. <laughs> I can't do this, bro. That was the driest review I've ever watched. Now this is a critique of your whole reviewing this game. Of course the graphics are going to look bad on your dinky little handheld camcorder. Why don't you invest in a capture card? You've reviewed multiple games. Elden Ring being one, well that backfired on you. For two, playing the first 30 minutes of a game is not good enough if you're going to review the game. I mean, you do movie reviews. You watch the whole thing, don't you? It's the same deal. If you don't watch the whole movie, you can't do a review. Simple. And I played the whole game of Legends Arceus. I liked it. You can tell it's oriented towards kids. I'm an adult. And your points? Basically low-hanging fruit. Oh my god, there's no music. There's only ambiance. And the graphics aren't that good. It's on the Switch. It's not on a PS5 or Xbox Series X. Calm your next-gen expectations with the Switch. Give the Switch a break. Now I'm going to explain what fair use is and what copyright abuse is. There are certain patterns that show us very clearly when a copyright issue is bogus. Now, if you're a legitimate copyright owner, don't worry about making a casual mistake, getting labeled as fraudulent or abusive. It's very unlikely and if we do suspect something, we'll give you a chance to explain what happened before you take any action on your channel. We always try to distinguish between people who are maliciously abusing copyright to block videos they don't like and people who have made an innocent mistake. Copyright is complicated and we understand that it can be tricky to manage your rights. So we always try to educate people about how the process works. But we have zero tolerance for bad actors who use copyright as a tool to censor or troll members of the YouTube community. There's a difference between a takedown request and using content ID. Because if you're using content ID, you're usually claiming the video, not a takedown request where if that appeal doesn't go through, it will result in a strike on their channel. And that's where the abuse comes in. Because if you're understanding fair use and you're just taking down these videos because you don't like the criticism, then that is abusive. All these people will not leave you alone because you keep claiming things and striking things because you think you are in the right, but not necessarily true. Another thing we hear a lot of concern from creators about is fair use. Criticism or commentary of someone's copyrighted work, even without the permission, is often protected by copyright law. But we still see copyright owners 
use our tools to try to control legitimate reuses of their work. Our team makes a huge effort to catch takedown requests targeting various videos before those videos are removed. When we catch these, we take the opportunity to educate the copyright owner about fair use and similar laws around the world. In some cases, we're even able to protect these videos creators against copyright lawsuits. Criticism and commentary are protected under fair use. So technically speaking, my whole review, this whole video, is fair use. I am using it to create a whole new work. Even though I am using your content, it has a whole new message and a whole new meaning. Whether you like it or not, it's just what it is. You talk about the third factor of fair use, well the heart of the work is gone. You can take someone to court and they'll probably still say it's fair use to most of the people that you're attacking at this moment. And when you do make a claim, it is a legal document. So if you were to lie in that claim, it is perjury. You don't have to sit and touch the book in court for that to be perjury. Now that we got that cleared up, let's go into all the harassment you have done. You have the habit of playing the victim, but you have actually went on the offensive with some of these people I'm about to talk about. Let's start off with the AV community as a whole. You are an inside joke. We, yeah, we kind of stopped paying attention to him a while back. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it became more of like um, an inside joke rather than a topic. It was like, oh, that guy? Yeah, don't listen to that guy. You know, that kind of thing. If it's one question I get over and over during the course of this channel, it's why does Quantum TV attack every other YouTube channel? Um, his what? cycle of videos works like this. Uh, find out what the newest, hottest TV is. Uh, he is going to go against the mainstream viewpoints. So if FOMO and other guys are like, oh, the motion on this TV is great, he's gonna go, no, the motion is terrible. Mm -hmm. and, and then he's gonna go, this TV is a piece of junk, it's overpriced, it's terrible, I would not buy it whatsoever. Right. Next video. Oh my God, you guys, this TV is gorgeous. I stayed up all night working on settings to fix this terrible TV. Mm -hmm. Join now, get my settings, so if you want to buy this TV, you can fix it. Sounds like an interesting marketing ploy. Be the contrarian, because no one's going to agree with you. It means you'll get more attention. Then all of a sudden, flip that on its head. It is the best TV ever, now that I have the perfect settings. Buy my settings. It sounds a little underhanded to me. So that's that's how he, he does these gotchas on YouTubers, is he'll go into their comments and ask them questions that if they don't give the right answer, the answer that he likes, he'll just make videos about them and saying, oh, exposed and you're a fraud and you're getting paid by these TV companies. And Quantum things. attempts to discredit every other AV YouTuber in the hopes that they'll go to his channel instead of theirs. He will do this for the most asinine or batch crazy reasons he can come up with. Sounds a little bit like you're on the offensive here, saying they are liars if they don't get back to you or you don't get the answer you like. You have this weird sense of justice and you mock other people for their sense of justice when people talk about you because you do bad things that people want to talk about. And I'm sorry, somebody's opinions on TV settings are not the end of the world. You do act like, oh, we have to get out the truth this is harmful information to the tv community no it's not that serious so your community thinks you are a joke but you kind of are you have the contrarian views you go after people who don't have the same views as you and then play the victim when people do talk about you and then you have paul the tech giant come on to our channel and immediately i need everyone's attention who the hell do you think you are you are nothing on this community and, and let me be very clear you are nothing on this community to be asking for people's attention when I'm speaking. Because I also Quantum? believe Quantum has ulterior motives in making this drama-related content and why he has playlists dedicated to exposing other creators. And here are just a list of people whom I know you have messed with. Soru, Griffin Gaming, Mischief, Review Tech USA, Stop the FOMO, Ninjition, My Gadgets World, HD TV Test, the Act Man and West Side Tech for all different reasons. I've missed quite a few other names because you have been around for a while, buddy. You would think after all these years of YouTube, you would have figured it out by now. And let's talk about Soru. 
You claimed a video that wasn't even yours to claim. He reacted to someone else's transformative piece. He was reacting to Klutzy King's video, which in turn, it's his new creative work, not yours. So technically, that whole attempt was fraudulent and abusive. Me talking to the act man, being sweet as pumpkin pie to the mother. <laughs> Calling her ma'am, saying, would you please put me in contact with him? I mean, no malice. Hmm, I'm sorry, bud, but I still smell- Take that! You did make veiled threats to the act man's mother, however, so your claim is invalid. Take that! I like how he leaves out the part where he said we wouldn't want families to get hurt. You know, that veiled threat that he kept claiming wasn't a veiled threat. But if it wasn't a veiled threat, you probably should have said it right there, buddy. Because honestly, like, let's be real. You knew it was a veiled threat. That's why you didn't include it in your little, like, spiel right there about what you said to her. So that clip started with Quantum talking about him calling the act man's mom. Then Soru pops in with his commentary, making it fair use. And then he goes back to Klutzy King's video of him reacting to the clip initially. Griffin Gaming had a little bit of music in his video. You kept moving the goalpost to basically try to make him take down his video, which he had the right to have up. So I started off the conversation by saying, just letting you know, I don't appreciate being threatened with an illegal copyright takedown for a video that was clearly fair use with commentary added, but I have trimmed out the clips of your outro music from the video as a gesture of good faith, and I am just waiting for YouTube to process the change. Because if I remember correctly, again, I wish I had the video, but I think that's what he was trying to copyright strike me on, was using like whatever music he had as his YouTube outro in my video. Mischief. Just a kid who made a video on your Elden Ring review because he did not think it was a good review, which it wasn't. And you basically threatened him. Veiled threats are a thing. You're only blaming Mischief for all of this because he made the first video. This has all been a facade to silence criticism about you. You have it backwards. Mischief didn't reach out to me. I reached out to him. As you can see in these DMs here. Make no mistake, Quantum, your takes were so bad. They were they were the worst I've ever seen. But you are the only one responsible for escalating this situation. You used your platform, your standing to routinely harass mischief. In Review Tech USA, you said he was a P-word with zero evidence other than he liked Vosh. And I don't know much about Vosh, but I seen the clip, it doesn't look good. But I'm gonna have to say that you can like someone and not agree with everything they say. You did say you were gonna look into your options, you did want to take legal action against me. That's also another shtick that people told me about you, like Griffin Gaming, that's what you do. And you went on a whole tirade for Stop the FOMO because he did a blooming test using the title screen of Lucifer, a Netflix show. The funniest being his opinions on Stop the FOMO, being a Satanist. Those infamous posts are real. And he's made these claims that FOMO is a Satanist across his community posts, his blogs, his Facebook, and in his YouTube videos. And there's probably multiple cases of you going after an magician, but the one I'm going to talk about is the one where you tried to claim you own Deadpool because you put Deadpool in his thumbnail. I know you thought you were silly and unique because you dressed as Deadpool to review TVs, but you're not that special. There was a DMCA he filed against Ninjitian where he tried to claim rights for cosplaying as Deadpool. I'm not kidding. And again, even fills out less information. Title of artwork, Deadpool cosplay skit. Type of artwork, photo. Is it a photo or a skit? Another quirky thing you did was to go after My Gadget's World because he used his daughter, his kid, to point out which one she liked better. And that's apparently abusive to you. Alright, tell me which one do you like and why? I like this and I don't like this one because it's so dark. I like this one because it's even brighter. This guy, My Gadget World, okay? basically bullying his daughter to give an opinion about a TV. The kid wants nothing to do with it. You don't believe me. Go listen at two minutes and three seconds when she goes, can I go now? All right, thank you. I appreciate your help. The, the kid has nothing to do with your review, guy. <laughs> Talk about the TV. Show the <laughs> TV. Be respectful of your family. Don't drag them into this <laughs> Bull <laughs> reason you come up in your head with that it's okay to bring children of all things onto YouTube and 
you know, you, like I could, I could just, I could slap you right now. I really could <laughs> slap the shit out of you right now for that. And you went after HDTV Tess just because you didn't agree with his takes and thought he was just this terrible person because he was spreading misinformation about a TV setting. It's not that deep. It's not that serious. Quantum TV thinks this man is a moron, a paid off goon with no morality, and generally disagrees with opinions held by both him and the community as a whole, which should tell you everything you need to know about him as a person. He specifically had issues with this video, which broadly covers some settings that are generally harmful to picture quality. He states that some people actually like motion smoothing, and telling them to turn it off is stupid. Now, despite being objectively wrong, motion smoothing is gut. I hate it. It sucks. Mr. HDTV actually mentions that some people prefer the setting, less than 10 seconds into the topic. Is it not ironic that a man who reviews televisions cannot be bothered to finish watching anything? The paid off goon part I mentioned comes at the end of the video, where our gracious hero defends the little guys by calling out the corrupt charlatan because there is a sponsored segment with something called filmmaker mode. Now you actually going after these channels and doing copyright strikes, that is actually damaging. That is actually serious. And I would say 99.9% .9 of the entirety of the YouTube community thinks that that is trash. Why do you think the majority of people do not like you? You don't even have to look at anything else other than your misuse of the copyright system. And I just find it ironic how you were saying Chris the Narc, Gara, and Minxie are not part of the YouTube community and you are. That is the complete opposite. They are a part of the YouTube community because they are protecting other YouTubers where you are attacking them. You are not the victim. And to top it all off, you are running a sketchy business. Sure, under YouTube's guidelines, it isn't a scam but it's still a shady business practice. If he wants to sell people settings and just say, hey, these are settings I did, you know, whatever, I don't care. Uh, but when you're telling people that you are a calibrator when you aren't, and that you're selling calibrated set settings and they're not, he will from time to time give an actual definition of what a calibrator is and what calibration is. But he then says he goes against that. But we're forgetting that I don't have 65,000 subscribers for no reason, I actually have a following. But my following is because I attacked people like Vincent Tio and I've attacked the AVS forum because of their dedication to the old ways of the 30 year old industry standards that don't work. It's like he will explain that that's setting it to a reference standard, but he doesn't use reference standards. So therefore you are scamming people and lying to people to make money and make the real calibrators and the ISF foundation, everything look bad with your lies. Now that sounds really scummy there, Quantum TV. If this is all true, then you are very shady. But let's see, how good are your settings? Of uh, this, you know, it's a, an actual reference image that's used to check a television after its calibration and show what it's supposed to look like and then just show like the basis of what he does. And you better have a bag of, you know, spicy Cheeto dust ready. So this is basically what it's supposed to look like. What Quantum wants to do and sell people Looks like that. <laughs> oh, God. So essentially, he's, well, not essentially, he's literally lying, telling people that he's a, a certified calibrator when he's not. Yeah. So wow. that, that, well, he says he's a master calibrator, which is no such thing. So, Quantum, your own community doesn't like you. You do not do the job you say you do, which people pay for. So you're basically scamming them, maybe not under YouTube standards, but you are scamming people. You are lying. You've been caught in a lie by me before. Like I mentioned at the very beginning of this video, you lie about your previous ban. You don't have to lie about that. It is common knowledge. So once again, because we've caught you in a lie before, can't give you that benefit of the doubt. Maybe I would have originally. So at this point, your victim play is not going to work. You actually go after people. You do fair use videos, but in a malicious way, so you're no better if you're using that as an excuse. And don't even act like it's for the greater good or anything like that, it's just because you love the drama, it drives traffic to your channel, whether it be good or bad, it's still traffic, and that's why you continue to do this. It is your cycle, and you will likely continue to do this. But just remember, you're crying harassment right now, but you are actually harassing other people while saying people are harassing you, so it just kind of depends on where the hammer falls. 
and you don't really have good legs to stand on since no one seems to be on your side except for your rider dies, which doesn't seem to be that many at this point. Best thing I could say is change. Just be a better person. I know that's probably hard for someone who seems to have narcissistic personality disorder. I'm not, I'm not an armchair psychologist or anything, but you're very self-centered. Everything's about you. Nothing is ever your fault. You cannot admit fault, like the ban. You cannot admit you were at one time ban. You have to lie about that as well. Maybe just for once admit you were wrong about something. But that is all for today. Please let me know what you think in the comments down below. And I will see you all next time. Bye!